Hello again, VC. Uh, it's Dennis back again with a few more records I picked up over the last couple of weeks. Uh, all of them have been either here, found locally, or uh, mailed in. I uh, want to get this out before record store day. I don't know what exactly my haul is going to be like tomorrow. Then over the next few days as uh, as like the on online retailers start putting their stock up there. Um, I pre-ordered a couple of things, hoping to get, um, there's a few more that I want, but the, the shop that I go to, while it's great, um, uh, they mark up the prices a bit, that's a little bit too much for my blood, um, especially for things that I think are gonna, are gonna sell out right away, um, but, uh, so, that, that video could go probably pretty long. Uh, if I had waited, so might as well knock some of these out. And if you notice me kind of starting to choke a little bit, it's because uh, this pile here is from, it, it's quite frankly a head shop uh, that they guy rents floor space out of. And so pretty much all these records and sleeves smell a lot like incense right now. And it's pretty overpowering. Uh, so first off... Uh, they had a couple copies of this, um, The Rascal's Greatest Hits. Um, I see it a lot here on the VC. I never actually listened to it, so I figured I might as well give it a try. Um, it's on your kind of standard Atlantic label. Uh, they had one that was, uh, uh, it was an earlier, it was a different Atlantic label where it was more of a teal color instead of the green, almost paler. Um... I originally had that until I found this one, and uh, the other one would have been fine. Uh, it was a little bit scuffed up, but this one is is a lot better, a, a lot closer to perfect. Um, and I started listening to these guys. I kept because I see a lot of their stuff on um, in the stores, and I figured there's got to be something to the band if they're everywhere. Like they had to be good. Um, <clears throat> I haven't heard anything from this specific album, I don't believe. Um, but it's the original Quicksilver Messenger Service. Um, Solid Silver. Let me try to... Uh, this way. Um. This is from... Let's get a year on here, maybe. It doesn't have a year. It does 75. It's on your Blue Capital label. Like I said, I don't really know the band very well, but so I listened to them a little bit, and they, they seem pretty good. Uh, this was a 100% blind buy. I don't think I've ever heard of this band. Um, but it looks like it's covering a number of songs. It's uh, Jay the American's Wax Museum. Oh, that is glary in hell. Okay, right here. So it has a uh, song like Walk in the Rain, Do I Love You, Johnny Be Good, uh, Room Full of Tears, Some Kind of Wonderful, uh, Let It Be, a couple others. Um, it's, in a, it's in a little gatefold, mostly just pictures of the band and such. All black and white there. On the United Artists, kind of red and black split label. You know, it, it, the the artwork definitely caught my eye. I don't, like I said, I don't know how good the band is or anything, or how good the covers are. It does have a little bit of a clip corner, um, but you know, I'm a sucker for cover songs, tribute albums, that sort of thing. Um, pick this up. We don't. I don't see a whole lot of, like, name brand blues or or jazz up here, and what I do usually is beat beat the hell. But this is a pretty, and I don't know if this is necessarily first print or not. It's in stereo, but it's uh, Blue Notes Gems of Jazz. This is a limited edition. Let's see here. Let's see some of the names that are on it. Um, of course, probably want to see the classic Blue Note label. 
Um, I'm not seeing anything about like the New York address or anything on there. The the wax is pretty clean. There's a few scuffs. Um, a little bit of not gunk, but just stuff that needs to be brushed off or cleaned off. But I mean the the sleeve is just cleaner and hell, you know. Pretty white. It's a little bit of kind of yellowing around the uh, edges. Um, in the same vein, found this Folk Songs Blues Fest album from um, Super Majestic. It's definitely not in English necessarily. Um, Un Selection. I don't know. This is the back. I don't even know if this is like an official release technically or not, but it's on Vox. Purple Vox label. Um, it says Universal Use. Stereo can also be in mono. Looked intriguing. Looked kind of unique. And, uh, you know, the little bit that I've heard from some of these, some of these artists here, especially Lead Belly made me you know, figure I can't really miss out on uh, something like this. Um, final 12 inch from this is Billy Joel's Songs in the Attic. Um, yeah, I don't know. Pretty sure everybody knows this thing. Knows this album. Or at least is pretty aware of it. When you're Columbia. What is that? Like a hyena? look at picture on there um yeah i don't really know what else i need to say about about billy joel and then uh so sorry records fell a little bit um so the way the i think i've talked about it before but the way the uh, record area is set up you have like when you walk in on the left hand side you have um rows of, uh, of, um, what was it, sleeved records, uh, slightly more expensive, you know, kind of for it, so you think it'd be, like, higher quality, but there's a lot of scratch stuff, um, it seems like it's a lot of overstock from this guy, but, you know, you, you find gems, you find ones, and I, I don't necessarily need a, a purely clean record as long as it, it plays well and it's not too noisy. Uh, but on the opposite side, they have records where it's like uh, one for $3 or three for 10. No, not three for 10. That wouldn't make sense. Five for 10? I don't remember. Um, and these are ones that don't have your, your uh, plastic sleeves on them. Usually the cases are beat to hell. A lot of the vinyls beat to hell. Sometimes the cases beat, but the vinyls relatively okay. Um, it was just a lot of battle tests and stuff in there. So sometimes you can find some gems, and I was just kind of quickly flipping through, and I see this ten inch. Very briefly, I see this color. It's red and white. Um, before it falls forward, and I go, you know, you you know when you see. When you're used to looking at an album, whether it's on your phone, or you've been looking for it, so you look at it a lot online. And I definitely recognize this color. I went, there's no way, because I didn't know this thing was a 10 inch to begin with. Um, so I flicked back a couple of, uh, couple of records, and I see this. Songs by Tom Layer. Um, this guy, he did a lot of, uh, I guess you would call them kind of novelty songs. Um, kind of in a similar vein to, you know, like, Hello Mudda, Hello Fada. Um, but they're, they're smart, a lot of them. Uh, you know, this, this, I mean, it's breaking on the bottom. It's not perfect. Um, and the, the record itself leaves, sorry, this can be a weird splice probably, but, uh, kind of hit my, my space bar. I'll try to splice this uh, clip in. Uh, but anyways, like I said, the, the vinyl itself leaves a bit to be desired. Um, I haven't played it yet, but there's, you know, it looks like there could be some deeper scratches that might, the first couple of uh, 
songs here on side one might not play correctly. It's definitely gonna be noisy no matter what happens. But it's on this uh it's on layer records actually. Three three and the third. Um and uh like I said I've never seen it, I've never really actually looked for it, never really thought about it. Um I mean this thing has some great songs on it, you know, Fight Fiercely Harvard, The Old Dope Peddler, Be Prepared, The Wild West is where I want to be. I wanna go back to Dixie, Lubachevsky, the the Irish Ballad, The Hunting Song, My Hometown, and Three Love Songs. Um When You're Old and Grey, I Hold Your Hand in Mine, and the Uwiener Schnitzel Waltz. Um you know, this is circa 1953, I guess. Um, so I was pretty stoked to get this. Even if even if it doesn't play well, you know, if it's noise or in hell or whatever, um, I'm still just really excited to have this piece. Um, I mean, Tom Lear, if you haven't if you haven't listened to him, just stop whatever you're doing and go listen to him. Um, so this next one. Uh, um, Please don't laugh at me. It's it's still sealed. I found this at Goodwill. Uh huh. I'll explain myself in a minute here. It's Kate Smith. Oh come all ye faithful. It's a Christmas album by Kate Smith. Um. Like I said, it's still sealed. Um. These are your typical Christmas songs. Um. But you might be wondering why. I mean, it's Kate Smith, right? It's 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 a Christmas album. It's probably not worth the dollar I paid for it. Um, see, I'm a big Philadelphia Flyers fan, and, uh, you know, Kate Smith, you know, there's a whole story with Kate Smith and the, the Broad Street Bullies back in the day, and, uh, you know, while I guess now I want to look for one word, she sings, you know, God Bless America on it, um, I figured this would just be a nice little display piece. I don't, I don't know if I'll actually open it and listen to it or not, because that's not what I bought it for. Um, and then finally, I got two, uh, video game records. Um, you might call it Private Press, you might call them bootlegs, call them whatever the heck you want to, uh, I own them. Uh, so I'm not gonna necessarily say who released them, um, because I don't know whether they want their names out here on videos, uh, but they're easy enough to, to find who, who did them, um. And first off, um, I love this guy's output. This is the first record I have from him. Um, it's Sonic the Hedgehog 3. And he always... It's a gatefold. Uh, this guy always puts out records and does their covers as uh, like famous um, records um, or albums. Like he did a Super Metroid that was Melancholy and Infinite Sadness. Donkey Kong Country as uh, Live from San Quentin by uh, Johnny Cash. Um, this time he did a mystery release for two albums. The other one being Metal Gear Solid. Um, it is on... Well, this one's on blue vinyl. It has a little bit of like red streaks in it. Um, but... It's my understanding that there was uh, three color variants. Um, he hasn't come out and said if they're like equal or if like the first one was a blue and then they ran out of blue so they made red and they made purple. Um, so, and I haven't listened to it yet. Um, I just got it in the other day. I'm really excited to, uh, to hear it. And then um, this other one um, another, another, uh, publisher put the, put one out, uh, before, but it was a lathe cut, not, like, an actual, like, a normal vinyl pressing, um, but it is, I'm gonna leave the thing out just for the little hype sticker, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, uh, original music was done by, uh, Koji Kondo, here's a, on the cover, Again, it's a little bit less glare. 
And then it does the the covers uh, or the sprites textured on here. Um, the music imposed by is in kind of a gold leaf, if you will. Um, there was only 750 copies made. There was four variants. Plain black had like 75. Um, another one had like 150, 175, something like that. And then the rest were kind of equally spaced out with whatever's left. I don't want to math right now. Um, and this thing has a ton of extras. Um, it does, I don't have all the stickers it came with. Those are out there. Um, but I got my favorite variant because it is friggin' gorgeous. It is the Hyrule Shield. Um, the video doesn't do it justice, guys. It is like this deep blue with, um, kind of a silver, uh, kind of rays coming out of it. Um, I need to wipe this thing down. There's a lot of paper on it. Um, and previously this guy, uh, I think I showed him I made my first video. He did a release for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, NES games. One side's the, um, arcade game. The other one's the, the one that was made for the Super, or for the original Nintendo. Um, so there's some extras in here. Um, it's so along with a sticker for his little record, uh, studio, well, not studio. Uh, got a little sticker for Link to the Past. Um, also, little insert with some, I think this is from the manual or maybe from, uh, the Japanese cart or something. And the back has the track listing and the opening screen from the movie or from the game and then there's another little insert that shows uh, the game world in both the light world and the sh darker shadow world um, I mean this we, we were we were all pretty hyped on this um, they were in the know um, it was a long time coming it kept teasing us and teasing us and teasing us and, uh, again, I haven't had a chance to spin this. Both, both of these, uh, records, both the Sonic and the Zelda, um, came in this last week. And between work and life and all that, man, it's been, been hell. But, uh, so that's it for me. Uh, hopefully it's not too jarring of a edit there. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of video editing, of course. Um, so I'll be back hopefully the next week or so, depending on what my haul is tomorrow and then what I can get on an order from, uh, from some of the online retailers on, you know, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so until then, uh, keep on rocking.